back to the Unpatched Gaming Podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Barrett. And I'm your host, Zach. We are continuing our Pillars of Horror series. Uh, we're Today, we're, we're exploring some more niche stuff, I, I guess some pretty obscure titles or otherwise uh, underrated titles. Maybe underrated is the wrong word. Uh, <laughs> like, lesser oh, known yeah. titles. Lesser uh, known. Rule of Rose being one of those. Now, it, that it, is his copy. Uh, yes. Um, it has it has really skyrocketed this year. Uh, I think last time I checked on eBay, which like was what, last week, seven hundred bucks. Or regularly going for between six fifty and seven fifty, which is nuts. Don't don't buy this game. <laughs> don't you do it uh so there are other ways there are other ways to play it and other ways to spend your money goodness gracious uh yeah so some some harder to find titles or just lesser known things it's infamous for its price but what we're gonna dig into it and really talk about its merits we'll also be talking about pomali which yes. Be interesting. Pamali, a, a little bitty indie game, and we'll be wrapping up our discussion on Darkwood. Darkwood. We wow. both got to finish it. Wow, this week. what a yeah. game. Very excited to talk about that. We also have a beer. Now you you've already you've already started on this uh, yeah, quite a bit. I couldn't. I have not myself. yet. It's so fragrant. This is a uh, triple IPA from Elder Pine. They are in Gaithersburg, uh Maryland. where is that? Maryland. This is dying on the forest floor. Aptly named for our discussion of Darkwood today. Uh, yeah. Indeed. Wow, this smells fantastic. Yeah, it's really bitter. Just like I mean, a lot of people like the more, you know, kind of light creamy IPAs. You know, I, I like that stuff quite a lot actually. We have just the other night I went to Whitestone Brewing, uh, up in uh near where my parents live and it's great. Really creamy IPA. It's called Keyboard Gangsta. It's it's really Keyboard good. Keyboard Gangsta. Specifically the A. It ends in an A. I'm not just <laughs> trying to sound lame <laughs> on purpose. Like, that's how they spell it. Yeah. But, yeah, it's really interesting, good stuff. Uh, most IPAs that seem to be popular kind of take that route. But this is, like, bitter, floral-smelling, just clap. Yeah, you can tell they dry-hopped cool. the crap out of this beer. And it, it's I like that kind of stuff quite a bit. Definitely. Definitely. So... We are going to dive into Rule of Rose first. Uh, as the tagline on the box, back of the box says, it's a story too cruel, too beautiful to go untold. Yes, absolutely. I'd like you to, to take it away, Zach. Let's talk about this. Oh, my headphones. You should put those on. Should hey, those on. Uh, now you can hear my beautiful voice. Your beautiful, all the beautiful voice. So I think, uh, I think what we need to discuss first and foremost is that this is is an infamous game mm -hmm. right and not only that now because of its price but because of the incredible controversy around its release limited tiny itty bitty release mm -hmm. sony wouldn't pick this thing up i mean this is a a tiny game and all of the reasons that governments banned <laughs> this game were pretty much lies, like incorrect. outright lies. Uh, I think the one that I took note of was children are get buried alive in this game, which is not the case. Jennifer does. Sure. She's 19. She's, uh, that she's is 19. legal age in all of the countries where this was banned. Yeah. So Yeah. Uh, I, I recalled the Mass Effect controversy just this morning. I just said legal age. As if you're of legal age to be buried alive at that time. <laughs> Uh, no, I meant Correct. illegally an adult. Yeah, you can that, to should do that. Be, that should be uh, <laughs> clarified there. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I re recalled the Mass Effect controversy, like, when was that? 2008 it came out or something? I don't remember. Uh, today we were watching the, the Fox News segment with Jeff <laughs> Keighley from, yeah, 2008. It was 12 years ago. Uh, and, you know, they're, they're trying to claim that there's full graphic nudity and sex scenes in it. And it, it's just not the case. And no. it, they're trying to make it out like it's like it's basically a porn game but you know jeff Keeley's trying to dispel that and, and tell them that you know this is one not graphic at all uh there's just a a little bit of side nudity barely and it's like a two minute cut scene if you even are able to develop a relationship with those characters uh, but <laughs> it's just, not just, just like a click sex button to yes. engage in sexual <laughs> intercourse press press x to sex <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's not what's going on here i uh, i am surprised Jason. actually Jason. <laughs> stop <Jason>. this immediately <laughs> 
That is a completely different context. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. I'm sorry. So... All right. Moving on. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Okay. Let's keep talking. Yes. Let's. Um, uh, yeah. So I'm actually very surprised at sort of uh, how tame this uh, some of the themes in here are. Yeah. It's, you know, it does deal with adult themes. Sure. And maybe some of those things could have been handled a with a little more care. But overall, I think that it is, it it's does practice subtly and, and it is thoughtful. Yeah. So. And the developer, I mean, they only did two things, but, oh, sorry. The, uh, the developer only did two things and uh, two games, the other being uh, Contact, which Tyler has on the shelf up there. But they kind of grew out of the development studio that initially made like Moon RPG Adventure, whatever I don't even the whole title, but that you know that game and a couple other games, and uh, that development company kind of split off into multiple, and one of those split offs uh, was the development company here, uh, who made Rule of Rose and uh, Contact, and that's all they made. That was it. Uh, Atlas Pub picked this the sucker up, published it, and that one, so. Yeah, it's it's a really unique little piece of weird, almost trivial history in like gaming footnote. Yeah. Um, but I'm glad we got a chance to play it. Mm-hmm. I I am too. Now we didn't finish it. It is well. First of all, we've just had a, a pretty tumultuous two weeks here playing a lot of games. I and just moved out of my house. Yeah. Suddenly, you know, your move out date was moved up to right now yeah and so i just was like all right get out boys yeah and so i just yeah my wife and i just got everything moved out we're actually living with my parents for a couple weeks uh while the new house is being finished so yeah needless so that's to say exciting it's really exciting um not only that but then this work week i mean i've just been working late almost every day so it's been tough but that being said we really intentionally wanted to play this game together on the PlayStation 2. Yeah. Uh, you have it, so why not? Exactly. Kind of thing. So Now my wife can stop bugging me like, why do you spend all that money? You're never going to play that game. And now you played I that played game. played that game. Most of it. It's very difficult. But not in it, like the like intentional difficulty. Not like Darkwood. Darkwood is an incredibly well-designed game. Yeah, difficult, balanced. Very well balanced. This is, okay, difficult is the wrong term. It's broken. Broken beyond belief, truly. In I, that sense, in the in the combat sense. Sure. Yes. Everything else works. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think some other things are poorly designed, but they work yeah. the way they're intended. Uh, the combat, however, is a broken mess that will likely impede your progress, and it did for us. Yeah, and enjoyment, unfortunately, in a lot of yeah. ways. But that being said, we'll get to that. I think one thing that I'd like to make sure that we discuss is... What a lot of people would come to a Rule of Rose discussion with if they were already aware of the game's existence is what makes this thing interesting? Is there more to it than just it being rare and hard to find and people know about it? Mm-hmm. You know, is there something else there? And as you and I have kind of delved down the YouTube rabbit hole and kind of done a little more research, there are staunch defenders of this game. It does have a cult following in some sense who all acknowledge, of course, its fault, faults and its flaws. But I think it's very interesting to see that there is a following who who adamantly defends this game as um, deserving of a cult status. Mm-hmm. So uh, that is there. So, but for us, let's talk about the horror. I think that's where we should go first. Yeah. Okay. Um. I. It's definitely a horror game. It it fits uh, my boxes. You know, we we talked about those before. That's sort of the you know stripping to, stripping away of the player's empowerment there's sort of like some some scrappy survival involved obviously the tone and the the atmosphere that's created uh, does invoke many elements of horror and so I... it's hitting those boxes for me but it also has a very particular brand of horror that I don't see very often and that is you know the the really demented kids the this orphanage setting what well, i mean most of the game is not actually in the or- orphanage but that's a big theme in the game and those mixed with a lot of the really gruesome imagery sure. evokes a lot of the stuff that i i find creepy and i don't think it's horror specifically but well i mean it's it's horror but 
I, I, I was never scared sure, at either. all playing this game. I was consistently disturbed by, by seeing... It's a very good, uh, I guess, way of describing it. I think that hits the nail on what I was going to say, too. How the horror is not really in the gameplay. Like, when you and I were talking about Darkwood, it's, dude, you can only see this much, you turn around, something's there, you hear something. Like, that's building that horror through that gameplay. Something that you and I both find really interesting. Every scene that I think of that was jarring to me in Rule of Rose, something that, you know, disturbed me, to use that really good word, was like a cut scene or like a little moment in the in the details of, you know, body language or the, the design of the characters. Mm-hmm. Those are the things that stand out as horror uh, uh, to me. The things that disturb are all in those pieces. And when you watch these videos of these people who really defend this game, they're mentioning those kinds of things. This is what stands out to them because it is really well done. When you start the game, uh, you're you're this girl, 19-year-old girl named Jennifer, and you're on this bus going to visit the orphanage you grew up in. And on the way, there's a, a little boy at the front of the bus who comes back to you and says, finish the story, please, Jennifer, finish the story. And it's just this, you know, storybook with just a couple pages that's obviously about you. And, um, the, and this wh- is like a thrown together storybook. Like it's some stapled pages and Yeah, and a, a kid made it with, you know, and like these kind of very crude drawings. And uh, most of the chap- in between chapter moments in the game are done in that style. It's very cool, actually. And what I love is you get off the bus, you chase the boy, you're trying to get towards him. And when you finally get to the orphanage and get inside, there's not much to do. Like in terms of gameplay, like you need to go follow the kid up the stairs. Done. But you can go into basically every room and look at all the stuff there. And you can pick up some items that are just like a photograph of, of the of the orphanage, you know, residents and the instructor and the maid and stuff. And it's interesting because it seems like something would be more useful at the end of the game when you know the context and the story. But it puts it right up front and mm-hmm. lets you explore and these very detailed little rooms and items in there and if you like that kind of game and are willing to overlook a lot of the faults, I would say go for it. And don't don't spend the $700 for don't it. Don't spend the $700 It might for be it. up your alley. It might be something that you would enjoy playing yeah. if that's the kind of stuff that stands out to you. There's a lot to be seen in the environment, and the story is primarily told through cutscenes. If, if you are, are able to you know get through some, some pretty consistent frustration... Yeah. Well, I, I say the the combat isn't a huge part of the game. Thankfully. But it's but such a it huge is, flaw. It, it, some and it of it does is impede nearly progression. impassable. Yeah, it's, uh, it does impede progression a lot. The bosses are, if not difficult, then extremely frustrating. And there are little moments where you, uh, the part that we finally said, you know what, forget it. You get barricaded in by a bunch of the, the enemies and... And you have to just, in this small space, defend yourself and, and fight them off. And unless you have, like, a bunch of healing items, you're <laughs> there's not much you can do. Yeah, because the... So, some of the ways that it, it's broken is that, you know, you're swiping and your hitbox is really small. Swiping, like, with your knife or something like that, whatever weapon you're currently using, your hitbox is really small. And, and when it's it seems not like small, the, it's hard to discern where it begins and where it ends. Yep. And then the enemy's hitboxes are typically pretty unwieldy. And they can dodge. And once you've committed to a hit, you, you have to engage combat mode by holding R1 and then start you know, slashing. You can't dodge out of that. You can't cancel that. You're you're in it now. No, so, all you can do is strafe. Like, you can't turn. You yeah. can just move side and to side And the enemies can bit. jump out of the way. It's very yep. difficult um, to do anything about them. But also, when you knock them down, you can't hit them. They have to go through this very long animation of getting up, and you're just sort of there doing nothing. Now, if there's multiple enemies, you can turn around and hit another one. But if there's three or four enemies, you have to find your way into this loop to where you can knock one down, turn around, hit another one while another one is approaching you. And you can't hit them while they're down. You can yeah, you can't. This little step no, they can't thing. hit you either. But what sucks is, you know, as you stand back up, once your hitbox activates again, they're probably in the middle of a swing against you already anyway. Yeah, that does happen a lot. So it's it's 
incredibly frustrating. It's it's not well designed. Um, and the developers will admit that, and, and they have, mm-hmm. uh, that they did not have the time. And so they focused on the parts that they felt were more interesting and important in the game and rushed this out. I love uh, Thor High Heels. I I really like that YouTube uh, channel. If you haven't checked him out, definitely do it. He's he's extremely underrated, in my opinion. He should have way more viewers. He reviews a lot of interesting, obscure, weird games. And intelligently, too. And he talks about Rule of Rose, and he mentions that Silent Hill also has weird, clunky, bad combat but the enemies are balanced in a way that makes it doable. That makes it so that... Yeah, they're sort of de- designed around that clunky nature. Yeah, like, the, sure, it doesn't excuse that the combat is clunky, but at least the enemies aren't designed for a better combat system. Mm-hmm. They're I, designed... I think that, that is a pretty um, intelligent observation. Yeah. This is not the case. These enemies are balanced for a character that's a little more nimble maybe has a, a few extra actions to yeah, perform a clearly defined hitbox and mm-hmm. um yeah i agree with all the, all those sentiments 100 yeah. percent. um one of the pretty interesting aspects of design i think it was poorly designed poorly implemented but certainly interesting is the dog brown. yes brown so it's a huge part of the game there uh, not you, only to the gameplay but the story as yeah well. mm-hmm the uh, the dog you come across your your good friend through most of the game is is able to sniff the items that you have in your inventory and lead you to to other items so if you want to pick up more healing items have have him sniff out healing items you already have or if like let's say you saw a character um, eating a thing before and then you pick up one of those characters items then you can potentially sniff that item and find other things that that character you know similar food to what the character was eating so now you have more healing items because of this wide variety of items you have in your inventory but also that leads you to new points in the story so, like, let's say you pick up someone's um, hairband or something. That's going to lead them to their room where you find them sobbing. And then they run out. So you take the book that they were reading and you, you sniff that out. And that book has a different owner. So it's leading you down this uh, chain of items. But it's oftentimes not uh, optional. It, it, it's pretty mandatory through the game that, that you do that. Because the airship, you're, you're on an airship too. You're not in an orphanage. Once, you, once you're in the orphanage... You then kind of go into this kind of dreamscape-esque, basically a a large blimp, you know, uh, picture of the Hindenburg, right? Just a big, large blimp kind of, uh, it's based on another disaster though, actually. Um, I don't remember which one, but, and you're kind of walking this huge from from end to end, you know, in the game. You're you're going all the way to one, all the way to the other as you play the game. And it's uh, it's a lot. And without the dog, it would be in because you don't have the dog at the beginning. And it's like, where do I go? What am I supposed to be doing? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's pretty difficult to maneuver around or it's easy to get turned around without being without having that waypoint. But because it's mandatory, oftentimes, like I guess some items won't show up. Yeah, Until so and they've been if sniffed. you don't have it activated as a sniff out uh, the find feature and you don't have him sniffing for it, you won't be able to see it to pick it up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's a little frustrating. It it really boils down to, the, the dog does, boils down to uh, just a waypoint marker like you'll see in Bioshock, you know, that big arrow at the top of the screen. Sure, it's just better than those around. things. <laughs> it's better. Or Okami. Oh, my God. I just, yeah, it's... I don't mind it. I don't understand how. <laughs> the uh, yeah, so so he's basically a big arrow. It's just better designed, though, still poorly implemented, unfortunately, because it does become mandatory, and the the space is designed in a way that I I think unfortunately is a, a little sloppy because they rely on the dog That's to fair. to get you around, but. If, if the space was better designed, you wouldn't need the dog all and the time. like we said, this was really difficult development, period. Um, really uh, running out of money, rushed at some points. So it's, you know, a lot of this is because of that, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. I believe the development team is extremely competent just based on what they've worked on in the past. 
It's just one of those unfortunate things, I think. Yeah. You know what will stand out to me forever, though? Is the character Amanda. Oh, yeah? Okay, so she's this little girl, kind of the cute, curly, you know, whatever, hair Before thing. you get too far into Amanda, should we should we talk about the aristocrats? Sure, yeah, let's let's frame this a little bit. Yeah. That's probably better. So, essentially, you have the Red Crayon Aristocrat Club, and Great this name. is... Great name. Oh, incredible. In fact, you get it on a piece of paper, and you see it, and I thought it was just a one-off thing. I'm like, this is a fantastic name. Like, <laughs> the Red Crayon Aristocrats. Yeah, it's amazing. So, it's this hierarchy structure um, where, you know, you have the bourgeoisie at the top, the duchess uh you have the the baroness and then at the lower classes you have the kids that most consistently get picked on who are required to bring gifts uh once a month to the aristocrat club you have uh, and your character is of course as the lower. new girl as the new girl you start at the bottom as the beggar and right above you is amanda the poor who was their previous pick on kid uh, before you showed up and so Amanda is this extremely broken little girl, like at a disturbing level where she's been constantly bullied, constantly made fun of, but she needs to participate in this system because then at least she, you know, might have the chance of not getting bullied, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and it's extremely disturbing to watch her just break further throughout the game as as they pit you and her against each other and she starts to hate you uh extremely yeah and there's there's a scene in the game where the the first time that she has to harass you in whatever way whatever sort of hazing that she's tasked with putting you through she knows that you're going to surpass her in this hierarchy so she's like begging you to harass her in this particular way uh because she knows it's she's in between gonna crying be her turn. and laughing and yeah. she has these chubby cheeks you know the little girl and uh, what she's probably like what nine yeah ten. probably around there and uh and she waddles everywhere and she again the going between this disturbing maniacal smile and stare to this weeping impish you know like please yeah. don't hurt me and you can see it in the uh the main cut scene or the the opening cinematic which is it really takes you through just about all the themes that the game is going to be dealing with it was the most it's very I, long when it was done i realized this is the intro cinematic like i feel like i've been here for hours just yeah. watching this thing and i have no idea what's going on and when you finish the game you have the context to understand each moment but it's it's a work of art on on its own honestly it's mm -hmm. very well put together and you know what we have not mentioned is the music yes uh, one of my favorite parts about this game i think this i was listening to it this morning and unfortunately it was accompanied uh, accompanied with a slightly traumatic event uh but i was listening to the soundtrack this morning and it is an absolutely stellar orchestral soundtrack there's some uh, at least one track in there that's like a, something you might hear from well darn it what is amanda's favorite game spirit fair now it's spirit no, no, no. that's I, exciting I thought you meant like that she's playing now and listening to the soundtrack a lot no fallout something you hear from fallout oh interesting. Uh, sorry i just had a blank uh you know like 30s somewhere between the 30s and 60s uh it's it's really old music but it's written i i believe specifically for this game that gramophone uh, yeah, yeah yeah uh, that's that's a great soundtrack or at the very least like the story is structured around that song if it if it wasn't written specifically for the game uh, but the 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 screeching violins are implemented in a way that aren't just there to sort of you know pull you into whatever scary scene is supposed to be happening right now which i think is you know violins are maybe overused in that manner but they'll like pluck the violins too yeah tick, 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 yeah tick, tick. it's really creepy and it's it's not intended to you know warn you of a a jump scare or something like that this is really just to get under your skin 
just as you're, you know, walking through a, a well-lit living room with a plush couch, there's this plucking violin and like something is just getting under your skin. It's you so can't handle good. It. Yeah. It's really, really good. Uh, I love it. Dude, yeah. It's, it's a great song. I, I agree with you 100%. 100%. And I do think that the atmosphere and the... Um, the aesthetic design, the character designs, each character has, you know, so much, there's so much backstory, so much, so many reasons they are the way they are. And as you uncover those pieces and start to put them together, these characters grow into their caricatures that they're presented to you as. They're presented as these very over the top um, exaggerations of themselves. But then as you pit their backstory together you see why jennifer is perceiving them that way because a lot of this is in her mind right as she's dealing with this the traumatic events at this orphanage as she's revisiting it and trying to put these pieces back together right she this is the way that she perceived these events and the way that she perceived these other girls but as you the player start to put the pieces together it makes more sense to you mm -hmm. and it's really that's that's why I kept playing for a long time. Why I pushed through the insanely difficult bosses. There's one that maybe isn't difficult is the right word, but it's a mermaid in this bedroom. And she goes up to the ceiling, drops down, tries to attack you. And you just have to hit her. She goes back up. And, I mean, it takes ten minutes. It yeah, just... yeah, right around ten minutes. It's just exhausting. Yeah, that's like, it's a good There's report. nothing interesting about it. I mean, the design is interesting. Sure, like the actual the design reason, of the... The reason it's there. It's like a, a a young girl who's been strung up from the ceiling but by her legs. And the, the rope that's wrapped around her is made out to be the... And her feet, like, protruding from the, the coil of rope. She has, like, it's, gills carved in her and stuff. Yeah, it's and... pretty disturbing. Yeah. Which, which again, most of the game is. Uh, just the, the thumbnail for this video is really, at the very least, evocative. Yeah, it, it, it's uh, it is something. Um, but I do think that for some people, again, there there are those who I think would get a lot out of this. But it's mm -hmm. definitely a cult status game. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's the kind of thing I where think rightfully so. Yeah, I agree 100 percent. It's the kind of thing where, you know, I watch Monty Python's Life of Brian and go, not everybody would like this movie, but I know who would love this movie. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's just uh, it's one of those kind of things. Uh, but I think on a much smaller scale, this a very small audience that I think would really get all that you can out of this game. I, don't, I definitely don't think it's for everybody, and I can't think of anyone off the top of my head that I would recommend it to. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, I do think you know, regardless of all all its flaws, it's it's worthy of that status, and it's it's Me got too. some very interesting things going on. A lot of the interesting uh, gameplay mechanics. Well, really, there's not many mechanics. The dog is interesting, and I maybe we'll check out haunting ground next year see how that dog is implemented sure i think that's totally valid yep. i would love to just play haunting ground sure uh, just just see how the dogs stack up uh, but you know it's got a bunch of flaws it's got a lot that is very interesting and yeah, I, I i agree with your sentiment yes okay. i wouldn't agree cool. to everyone but uh, i mean uh, recommend it to everyone but I I can see the value, not the monetary value. Sure, that but I can be see very the value about that. It. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm very curious to see if any listeners are like really into this game, who are really staunch defenders, and I'd I'd love to just hear from mm -hmm. them. Like, what is it? When did you play this game? Why did it impact you the way it did? And also, can you you know if you did purchase it for a pretty high price, can you? separate can you justify it to your wife <laughs> no, no no can can you separate you know trying to justify your purchase by saying it's good because i i think that's a maybe less valuable uh criticism i agree with that um so yeah, taking away the price where's the value in the game that's what i want to hear about cool definitely what's next man we got pomali pomali or, uh, pomali i think is, oh. is how it's pronounced. Uh, so, uh, Pamali is a an Indonesian horror game. The full title is uh, Pamali Indonesian Folklore. Uh, folk horror? 
Folklore right. horror. Folklore horror. So this is a uh, Kickstarter success from I think uh, two or three years ago. It was it just finished its last chapter this month. I think on the first, they uh, the October first, they released the uh, the witch thing, which we we tried out. So uh, this is from a very small team in Indonesia. I forget where exactly. But a very small team in Indonesia, and what they set out to do, uh, I think, is very interesting and uh, and admirable. You know, we come from a Western country that has uh, largely done away with superstition and a, a lot of religious beliefs as well. Um, I, I think generally in society, you know, those things are pretty disagreed with. Uh, that's not the case in Indonesia or many Eastern societies. Sure. Um, and there are many superstitions that are such a huge part of, of their their day to day to day lives, and that's what the the team set out to um, sort of share with the world. Yeah, in fact, that's explicitly above sharing a game. They wanted to share that piece of Indonesian culture yes. with the world, and with that goal, I do think they succeeded. Yes, I I do agree. Uh, you know. Every item and and the uh, that's that's a bit of an exaggeration. Many items and just the placement of those things, or how you look at them and talk about them, or how you engage in just your day to day routines, are all doing something on a spiritual level. Even like in the in the first one we played, like taking a bath too late at night has some sort of spiritual repercussions. Yeah, um, absolutely. Or you know, one of the chapters we didn't play. Uh, Looking too long at someone's photograph. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so all of these superstitions are taken into account when you're playing these games. And uh, and if you want like a purer ending or if you want a different way that you can, you know, go through the game and experience a different ending to that little story, you have to pay attention to those kinds of things. Yeah. So, so it's structured in a way that... The way it's presented is someone is making a game. You're just like in this person's room uh, at, on their laptop or whatever. And they're being emailed stories uh, about um, the, the the way the interviewee has experienced Pamali, which is a taboo. I don't know why this froze up, uh, which is a taboo. Something that, you know, like looking at a picture too long, that would be a Pamali. Um, because it's it's a taboo thing, uh, that action or that word or item or whatever. Um, so they're being emailed stories uh, about these people's lives, and there's four stories you can go through, and it goes into like this first person walking simish sort of horror game. And the first one we played was the the white lady, the launch one. Yeah. So. That involves someone coming coming home after a long time. Their parents have either moved out or died. I forget, moved out, maybe? Um, no, so they're, they've they inherited their parents' house. Where are the parents, though? I forget where they... They, they died. They died, okay. Yeah, yeah. so the, the, they've inherited the parents' house. They need to sell it for the mm -hmm. money. Yeah, uh, but their sister also died some time ago, and her ghost is haunting the house. So you get there, and he doesn't believe in ghosts, or at the very least is not scared of them. He makes very light of the ghosts and a friend that he talks to on the phone every day, it's like tries to. Yeah. And it's not like, you know, picture the classic ghost story in a movie. Like, you know, you go to the house, thing, weird things start happening. You start denying it, you know, you say, Oh no, 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 I can't be anything weird. And then something obviously strange happens that is unjustifiable. And then you still go, no, 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 there's, there has to be a reasonable explanation. And until you, you know, really start to add it up then you go okay something bad's happening i need to get out this is very different it's there's probably a ghost here like it's normal like you know there's probably a ghost here and i'm but I'm he's gonna... not scared of them yeah, yeah so i guess he does uh, given the culture he, he likely believes in ghosts but he's not scared of them but he, it's all yeah it's it's mo yeah it's normal like it's a uh, you know sure it's a little creepy for him mm -hmm. but it's not um it's not like the classic blonde reaction to the ghost in the horror story. You <laughs> sure, know? sure, sure. Uh, so uh, as you're, you're going through these three, three or four days, you have to clean the house, sort of get it in order for whoever's going to come survey the home. Um, you do finally see sure. your sister's ghost. Like things start happening and yeah, he understands it's a ghost right away. And the, the goal then becomes to... Uh, 
put your sister to rest. Yeah. Uh, were you able to finish that? Yeah, I did that. Did you get it on your first try? Uh, yeah. I, I had to play it twice. Yeah, I got it the first time by pure luck because mm-hmm. I couldn't find the coconut. And I was like, where's the coconut? Oh, I couldn't find the coffee. Oh, really? Yeah. I found that pretty quick. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you, you finally realize that you need to put your sister to rest and there's a little altar in her old room. And you're supposed to bring four items, four or five items that she really liked to this place. And, and, and pray. Sort of, yeah, pray and then put her to rest. Yeah. Now, what I... There's two things I really like about this. Um, one, and this is just for all four stories, uh, I think the the UI is super minimal. It's just the uh, the crosshair. Yeah. But the crosshair has a, a dual function in that it's a, it's a half circle uh, split into the left and right side. Which which means you can interact with the item depending on which side of that crosshair is highlighted with the the left and right mouse button. I, th- I think that's that's pretty yeah. nice and it's it's pretty slick. So if you've got a couple different actions with the item that you pick up, like let's say I hold the left mouse button, I then just push it up, left, right, or down depending on the action that I I'm choosing. Yeah, very intuitive. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm I thought surprised that was pretty that, good. Yeah, I'm surprised I haven't seen it in more places. Honestly, yeah, I I don't remember if I have. Um, so definitely props there. I, Huge props. I thought that was great. Um, but. It's like the second or third day, you you need to go to sleep. Like for for some reason, I guess the ghost like isn't going to haunt you in your sleep or something. Uh, but you're staying up too late, and more and more things start to happen. And this is the the night when I died. I decided I wasn't going to go to sleep. I I was looking for the things, and uh, shelves started opening, uh, you know, cabinet doors and things, and more and more sounds were coming around. And like I saw her down a hallway and stuff. And uh, the the music really started to creep in, and the camera start or like the the lighting starts to fade on the sides. Was that like a vin? I forget what that effect is called. But anyway, uh, and then finally the the story ends, and you spent too much time um, scared by this ghost, and uh, you don't achieve the goal. Sure. And then it gives you a rundown of all of the uh, the mm-hmm. pomeli that you interacted with. I think that's pretty interesting as well. Yeah, and so like you get to that's the part where you're being taught about the culture, right? Mm-hmm. Where you go, "Oh, because I did that the ghost was offended or because I did that um, I was negatively impacted by it in some sort of karma uh, some sort of karma, mm-hmm. right? And it's it's really interesting uh, how they structure that and want you to learn how to interact with this world in a way that is respectful it's it's really interesting i yeah. liked that so immensely. i think it's a pretty decent first impression uh, the game has is pretty rough around the edges it's very bare bones yep uh, yeah um you can tell it's a low budget it's very low budget some of the controls uh, leave a lot to be desired but uh, that first um, first story I think was was very well presented for what it is. They achieved what they were going for. It's a little frustrating. You have to clean, and that takes a long time. And you know, uh, yeah, it's it's not a very well designed game, but for what they were going for, you, their you goal said was yourself, achieved. Uh, the the game sharing the game was not the express purpose. So yes, I think their goal was achieved. But as a game that you're wondering if you should play, you know, for the horror the obligatory Octo- October horror games. Uh, maybe not. It's, yeah. it's a hard sell on Steam. Well, no, you can get the first one for $5. So there's four stories. Uh, you can get either the whole package for 15 or buy them buy the first one for 5 and then the other three are DLC for $5. So I guess for $5, that first one, uh, sure. I, I, I've spent five dollars on a skin before you know in in a game so i think it's pretty good experience for five dollars um the newest one though which is which the the other one we played hungry witch yeah we only played two of the four the hungry witch that came out this month uh this one was i think they tried to go a little too big difficult yeah try to go a little too big a little too big uh take it away here yeah so i mean the the main problem is a lot of it's not intuitive a lot of the really you know intuitive easy they give you a list in the first story you know what what you should be doing what you should be taking care of that day the character has written down a list of what he needs to take care of a lot less intuitive in this one you don't really know what you're supposed to be doing uh you you know there's a portion where you're supposed to find a branch uh something to break this branch and i looked around for 15 minutes and finally looked it up and there's this really obscure location where there's an axe but you can't see the head of the actually see the handle 
Yeah, so it looks like so it's tucked under a sink, and I was in this kitchen for a long time. A long time. I yeah. I was like, oh, well, I'll go there if I, it's not in the tool shed. Okay, fine. Maybe I can find something to cut in the kitchen. And so yeah, it's tucked under the sink, and I didn't excuse it for a pipe or something like that. But I just it didn't catch it looked my like a attention. handle of some sort of kitchen implement. Yeah, it it was completely shrouded in in the shadows, and I I couldn't see it. Yeah. Uh, and so that was frustrating, but that's that's the least of it. Sure, and then you know you get to um, you get to another portion of the game where you've encountered this this uh, creature, and you the hungry witch, the hungry witch, and you're having to deal with it. You realize you know I'm this kind of have this magical power inborn in me because of who I am, and I need to defend myself with this uh, ceremonial knife. Really cool again, the culture coming through there, but. Uh, a little clunky, defending yourself. Uh, the sure. same little click move kind of stuff, but with a timed reaction. And eventually you fall and you go into this kind of dreamscape. And you have to explore these extremely tiny rooms. And in the correct order, put together these um, notes and find these. You know, Was it a correct order? Uh, for some, not for all of them. Mm. Um, but in the room that you're talking about, the most frustrating one, there's this room littered with paper. I mean, newspaper clippings Not just on littered, the but wall. it's the wallpaper as well. Newspaper clippings and photographs have been uh, taped to the wall. And, and there are a bunch of little notes scribbled that are really hard to see yeah, in all of it. It's so And obscure. not only that, there you need to find four notes, but there are like eight notes and some of them are ones you you don't need to take at least eight well yeah. you don't even have the option to take it no, no no some there are there are four notes that you have to take to put in these little bowls crumpled up and there are four other notes that you can just take and read and put them back and like it's like why is that there <laughs> like, yeah and they are so hard to see yeah it took me a while uh, i i had to look at a guide i was not putting up with that i i was quite frustrated unfortunately by that point um, and then I I was unable to, uh, you know, I had some obligations. I thought I was going to be able to finish it in time, but I had to leave. And the next portion right you just take, the yeah, the next portion you just take some torches, burn some funeral pyres, and then you learn how to kill the, the monster and you show back up in the, in the real world and you go to the, you go to the graveyard and you, you kill it. Um, unfortunately I was, I was actually like, you know, a little bit, I was, unsettled in the first story you know i just can crawl a little bit here or there and like oh that's a little creepy like um i wasn't i was again more a little more fr- it, they i think they doubled down too much on the game part of it um, yeah and they they did go for a couple jump scares there yeah and, it, and i just don't think it worked as well unfortunately um if the again don't play this for october don't play it for horror but if you are interested in seeing a studio that is very very passionate about a engaging other cultures with their own culture this knocks it out of the park it really does yeah and i think that they're again unfortunately among the gaming community there may not be a very big audience for that kind of thing but i know there is one and Mm -hmm. i think again they do a great job and i would highly encourage anyone with those kind of interests to jump in this immediately I really love seeing development studios do these kinds of things where it's not really about the end product that we're usually going for there's a different intention, and to see games used in that way is interesting to me. Yeah, I'm glad that they did this. And there might be a lot more to offer there. You know, we we played the first and the and the last mm-hmm. uh, of these four stories, but just from what I the the little bit I know about the other two, I think there might be a little more of the first one in those than in the fourth. You know, okay. the, the DNA of the first one, whereas this one was uh, a bigger. It has acts and yeah, yeah. It, it was a much bigger production than the first one and fell short because of its its scope i think sure uh it sounds like the other two are not that way i don't know for sure but i think you might be able to get a little more out of it than even we did if you do go and, and try to play the, the whole thing um but that is uh that is pomely i'm yeah happy it exists i appreciate that it's there as a as a game itself though yeah and as a gamer sure yeah 
but that's uh, that's all I've got there. Yeah. I think let's uh, let's take a quick break and then let's come back and finish our discussion on Darkwood. Darkwood. Oh, Darkwood is it's good stuff. But uh, we will be back. Please check out our uh, Discord, which you can gain access to through our two dollar tier on Patreon. We'd yeah. love to have you there. Tell us if you played Rule help. of Rose. Uh, maybe some of Definitely. your survival tactics in uh, in Darkwood, and and just what you think about some of the games we played so far. If you've played Transistor. I want to know about your weird builds because I went back for a fifth playthrough this year and still did a, uh, this year, five playthroughs uh, that I, I haven't done before. That was sure. awesome. Uh, I want to know about that. That's the things. kind of stuff we want to yeah. hear about. Or I'm playing, or I think, I think I'm, I might be done with it for now, uh, but I just, this, this past two weeks have really dove into Slay the Spire. Tell me about your strategies there and how absolutely broken the uh, the robot is. He is nuts. But we'd love to see you there. Uh, Zach, you got anything? No, that's it. Uh, if you can't join us on Discord for any reason, we're on Twitter. Uh, we're on the Gram. Yes. Just definitely hit us up there. We'd love to hear from you. All righty. We'll be back. Welcome back to the <laughs> Unpatched Gaming Podcast. We have finished our break and are here to talk about some really, not some, a damn good game. Yeah, I I got to be honest with everybody listening right now. This game took me by storm. I was yes. not expecting to like this game this much. I knew I was probably going to like it, mm -hmm. but man. And honestly, I think we need to talk about this. Chapter 2 is where the game I mean, because Chapter 1 is amazing. We obviously loved it playing it. But Chapter 2 takes everything that was great about Chapter 1 and just takes it to the next... Several levels. Yeah, it's it's uh, incredible. Yeah. So I'm very so excited to talk about it. three sections in the first area. But real quick, if you haven't listened to oh, our yes. first part, our previous episode uh, does cover Darkwood. It's where we talk about Lone Survivor and Darkwood. We didn't finish it, so we only talked about the first half of the game. We'll also be putting this into, hopefully, a kind of one whole cut-together Darkwood. Yeah, yeah. So uh, check that out. Uh, it might be a little lost. Uh, there will be spoilers for the second half of Darkwood here, so uh, be prepared. Yes, uh, big spoilers. We're going to be really diving into everything, even up to the multiple endings, because I think we may have gotten something different. I don't, I don't quite know. I think about the same one. Okay. Um well, I think there's something about the end that might be a little different. But point is, oh, yeah, yeah, we're going to be sure. diving in definitely. So, uh, as we talked about last time, there were three areas in the first uh, chapter of the game. Yeah, and they all we show were up about on halfway your map. through the second. Yeah, yeah, they're all there. We're about halfway through the second one, so we we finished that, and then through the, through to the third, and then finally we're in this fourth area that isn't on the initial where chapter map. two begins. Yes, and it's it's a huge area. Um, probably so, roughly the size of all three areas. Yeah, just about. Um, and and it's... The swamp. Yes, the swamp. Uh, I think that's where this game shines. It It is an absolutely stellar experience. But to clarify, it's not one of those, oh man, you gotta get through season one, it sucks, but then season two is like really good, man. Like, it's not yeah, one it's, of those. It's a great game up to that point, but takes everything that it has taught you, that you have learned on your own, um, it, it ramps up the challenges in in many different ways, but also the the world it's building takes on a new form in in the swamp, and uh, and yeah, I love it. I love it a lot. Once again, man, take it away. Yeah. Okay. So I kind of want to start with why it's structured that way. Why do we have a chapter one and two? And I know from a from a you know crowdfunded standpoint, it's that chapter one is what we were going to build, and chapter two is what we were able to then build on top of that and to expand it. But it never feels that way. Like if I didn't know, I wouldn't know. That I didn't this is, know. Yeah. And so I think that when you look at this game and how it's structured, it's so intentional. You you get to your, your very first part of chapter one and you're just learning how to just even scrape by. Chapter two, the story elements really start to take center stage and you're still kind of learning how to serve a little better. The, the third part of chapter one, the old woods, is brutal in comparison to the first two. Like, in comparison to the first two, that, in fact, I would argue even with the swamp, it's the hardest portion of the game, is yeah, the old woods. Because of what you're still learning. Exactly. And, honestly, there's so much there that you're learning as a player, how to play. And it's so funny, because when you go to the swamp, you can only bring your inventory space with you. Like, in the other areas, you could ring this bell, and you'd get all your stuff delivered to you again. 
you can't do that in the swamp. You, you have to bring only what you can fit in your inventory. And it's like starting over. But it doesn't feel that frustrating kind of starting over. You know, it's that, all right, I'm prepared. I now know how to survive from the ground up. And I'm going to do it. And I honestly, it's weird for a horror game too, felt the horror shift from the old woods horror where I'm actually scared, nervous about the night to a little bit more like I've adapted to this environment. Mm -hmm. And there's a particular level of empowerment that comes in that second chapter. And the game uses that yeah. in such interesting ways, uh, both from a story standpoint and from a gameplay standpoint. And that's kind of what I want to talk about is why have that chapter one, chapter two break and how the developers use it. Um, I think that there's this shift in the way the horror works too you know uh i just mentioned that but i want to kind of dive a deeper into that and talk about how the horror becomes more the body horror expands in a lot of ways the body horror you mentioned uh, talk about the musician i want to hear about that yeah so in the second area you meet a young boy who uh, who's been peeping on this uh this woman who you is part of a um, sort of a side quest that you've been um, that you've gone down with the Wolfman. We mentioned the Wolfman last time as well, and he's he's sort of one of the central recurring characters. So he's he's after this woman. I guess they were well. He lies to you um, about his relationship with this person, who who's pretty grotesquely obese something has uh, made her body bloat she's bedridden and she's just oozing over the sides of these the side of these, this bed and uh this this young boy thinks she's absolutely beautiful and and wants to marry her but the wolf uh, wants her for other reasons which are revealed later uh you you meet the wolf uh, at least i did because i uh, you know we did different things there um i was able to give the wolf the key to her room and uh because he lied to you about what his relationship is with her so anyway when i meet the wolf later i i go into his room you know, we're just pals now like our contract has uh you know has ended and so now we're just pals that have both survived in this wilderness uh in in this forest and you you go into his room and you now see what is labeled as half-eaten corpse of a giant woman uh and he just wanted a snack uh so that was gross <laughs> but you uh, you befriend the this young boy that's been spying on her that wants to marry her, take her away from this place. And when you finally leave to the the third area or the fourth area, the swamp, later, like I was there for maybe five or six days before I found him. There's a locked door in the uh, in the place that you are, the safe house that you're in. So a locked metal door, you cannot get through it, but one night, you just see it open. And uh, again, something that we, we sort of went over last time was that you can see faintly the furniture moving or the doors opening, but you can't see what's specifically in that room. Uh, and, and I think that's uh, kind of like what the the senses do in games like The Witcher or I believe they do this in that uh, like robot dinosaur game on PS4, whatever that's called horizon uh where where you can see things on the ground like scents and things like that which are technically just like a waypoint marker but it's trying to get across the point that this character has heightened senses so it's kind of doing something like that you as a real person would know that you know the door in the hallway is opening because you can hear it and you have an intimate knowledge of this space yeah so let's try to get that across anyhow you see the door open. And so the next day I go over there. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm huddled up in my room. I'm not going to go check out what that is. But I go there the next day and he's hidden in the corner of this room. And you finally come into sight. Like you can't see it right away. The room is big enough to where you can't see the corner. Because um, it's, it's just shrouded in darkness. But by the time you get over there, you see this just massive um, pile of human 
and he has he he's been he, he's now suffering from something similar to the woman that we saw earlier and you're the only one that was even like remotely kind to him he was kicked out of his uh, his village and it's it's not explained what happened to him you know if this is like a sickness from the fungus is this a maybe like venom that is causing this from the the centipede man which is i think how he got here he like fell into one of the centipedes holes and you see in the village in the second area there's just these these few holes around there and there's like two eyes poking up and he's like these Little are like my glints. holes yeah it's it's obviously two eyes but you get away from my eye holes <laughs> yeah uh you you just see these two eyes down there and he's like these are my holes get away and the way i think every player will interpret that is it's just another crazy villager. But when you get to the swamp, there are giant holes around, and you find the centipede man. And so he's connected these two areas, and I believe that... No, I don't believe he that boy did fall into one of those holes and crawl out of the swamp. So anyway, you meet him. He's, he, he's so scared for his life. He's apologizing for his looks, and he didn't mean to intrude on your new home. It's a very nice home. Please just let me stay here. I'll stay out of the way. I don't need much. I just need this room. So you leave him there. And I left him there for like a day or two, and then I went back to visit him. And he, he was like quivering and, and scared and thanked me for visiting again. And so I start visiting him every, him every day. And he like he's like giving me treats. He'll like catch a, a mouse, which which will like heal you for a long time. Um, it, it'll just like keep increasing your health over a pretty lengthy amount of time. He'll he'll give you dead rats occasionally, but there's one time, it's like the fifth day that I, I go visit him. You leave the conversation, like you exhaust the different uh, dialogue options, and you either press you know B or exit or whatever, and he stops. He's like, please don't leave, uh, and then you press exit again please i just don't want to be left alone today press exit again please mister don't leave me here again you have to do it like four or five times before you're finally allowed to leave uh and then i don't know if it's the next day or when exactly this happens uh this starts to spread and he has now he, he has completely consumed everything in this room the giant metal door that you can't even blow up like i put barrels there to try to blow it up it doesn't work uh, has has just been shattered just broken off he's completely grown to the size of this room and is now leaking out of the room oh and i should mention before this uh he he moves closer to the door from the corner because you can't walk into the room anymore because now he is oozing this poisonous stuff so you have to open the door and stand outside the door and talk to him uh if, if you want to have those interactions but now he's leaking out of the door you can't even talk to him probably because like his head is um, you know, has, has been enveloped in his skin folds. But you mentioned something about your playthrough that uh, makes me th think that the wolf ate him. You mentioned the wolf comes to steal your items because you did not befriend the wolf in the way no. I did, right? No, I, I pissed him off. <laughs> uh, so, so what happens there? Um, so when you get to the swamp, you come back to your house one day and you see a bunch of footprints in your uh through your workshop and he's taken a bunch of your stuff and says and he leaves a note on your workbench that just says hey if you want your stuff back come up to the to the sawmill um and that's it uh and if you go back to the sawmill then he like traps you and you have to deal with some stuff and but yeah that's it hmm. so once i think he was there for like three days the boy uh after he had grown to that size and is now leaking out of the room uh I come back one day after being out. Like, I had visited him in the morning. He was still there. And then I come back later that day, and there are footprints leading uh, from, or I guess, like, to and from that building. Uh, they stop, so I don't know where they go eventually, but they lead out of my area for a little while. So I wonder if the wolf came to get him. I'm sure. Yeah, that's a, that guy. I hate him. I hate the wolf. He's interesting. He's interesting, but he lied to me. He lied to me. Yes, he did. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I, I think that's what, one of the, the greatest things that this chapter does is really focus on the story now. Yes, the, the survival gets harder, but you also get stronger. 
you have a much better knowledge of how all the systems work. So even though the difficulty is ramping up, you are you as a player are likely much more confident now. So it focuses on many different, uh, I guess, little vignettes uh, of just people that are surviving in this space because this is the closest people are able to get to the outside world. This forest yeah. is completely covered wherever they are, and this is the end of the road for many people. But they come here and they try to make it, and uh, it, it, it's got a lot of little Yeah, stories. the horror becomes, this is what, what I was going to say, is the horror is far more story-driven. You know, you just, you're baffled by these ideas and these grotesque, insane, like there's a my favorite character, and the whole game is just called The Snail. I want to hear about The Snail, because I, I accidentally killed The Snail. So, accidentally i was not gonna do it yeah so you you come across this clearing you're told that there's a uh, a piece to fix this oxygen tank compressor so that you can get some uh oxygen in the tank so you can breathe underwater uh, to make it to some significant areas in the game now what's interesting and what i think is just super bizarre is as you're going up this road there's just these along the side these you know, kind of th- think Uzumaki from, uh, you know, the Genji Ito, where it's just kind of these bodies twisting into that shell formation, and they're kind of, and it's just, it's like a hallway of just these bodies, uh, and some of them are still twitching, and it's very bizarre, and you come up to the house, and the house has been crushed beneath this massive snail shell. I mean, as big as the house. It's yeah. huge. And you just see, you know, just the snail go back in its shell, and you're like, I'm going to go there. And so <laughs> yeah, you, right? you run around the house and uh, there's That's a little a gross noise. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, there's a little, little chink in his shell and you can break through it and you walk in and it just, you know, it looks kind of like a normal snail. At, if you're not paying very much attention, it just looks like a normal giant snail. Uh, you do see like this weird hand, like human hand on the ground. Uh, that's made of that kind of same mucusy snailishness. Uh, and I love it because you go to talk to him, and it's just this snail head drew, as if it was just like pulled down like gum around this uh, this human skull that's like the jaws coming off. Yeah, and, it's it's really and grotesque. he's and the first thing he says is you're so disgusting, like he, you're so ugly, repulsive. I can't look at you, and <laughs> and you're just like. I love this guy. <laughs> yeah, just... But he, he specifically mentions that you are gross compared to other humans he's seen. Yes. And... So, which brings us back to something you mentioned in the first episode about what are you becoming, injecting all of these abilities. Yeah, and we'll, we'll talk about that when we talk about the ending, I think. Mm-hmm. But it's important to bring that up, that you find a body right outside of your base at the swamp, and you can take its head... And it's this bizarre, deformed... It doesn't even look like a human skull anymore. It's been, like, bulged out into the, you know, eyes the size of these giant flies and a little, like, kind of organy heart-looking thing coming off the bottom of it. And you, you're you like... It's very much implied that that's probably what you look like now. What? Yeah. Where is this? Outside of your base? Right outside the base. Uh, and his little journal, it looks just like your journal, but it's been deformed into a bunch of fungus like the journal itself and so it's very heavily implied what is yeah happening yeah it's, i did not see i'm this. telling you guys the horror becomes so much more subversive and it gets under your skin and makes oh you my think God, what is yeah, this? it's an incredible game but you're talking to the snail and uh he basically just asks you to cut him free from this thing that's holding on to him and you kind of see this large vein going out back and you kind of solve this little puzzle and see there's this huge mucusy beating membrane heart and you can destroy it and let him go and you and he goes i feel it i've been set free she's calling me she's calling me i need to go and you know you let him go uh and the next day he's not there but when you go down to look at uh, there's basically two ways that i know of to exit the swamp area and one of them is behind this radio tower that is just plagued with these enemies called banshees. And this is a banshee nest. And so if the adults see you, your screen starts to shake and blur and darkness creeps in and their face appears in the middle of it. Impossible to see anything really. And this, this 
Yeah, like it's, it's horrible. A, I mean, they're screech. screeching banshees. That's what banshees do. And uh, but the problem is they they're easy. You walk up, you stab them, but then they like kind of drop all their eggs or whatever, and their little banshee babies that look like de- like halfway formed baby birds that just crawl across the ground. They just start chasing you, and you just can't melee them if they get you into a corner. Yeah, uh, it's so very difficult. All I do is just take the pistol out and shoot. Unless them. maybe you had a knife or something uh, that could swipe really quickly, but your typical melee weapons useless. Uh, yeah, they're very. Unless slow. you have a big space. If you have a big space, you do you can do pretty all right. Anyway, uh, you see that the main pathway down to the radio tower has been blocked off by his shell. It's huge, and you see it's shattered, and you just see him, like, ripped in half. Oh, no. Like, his little, like, tendrils of snailness and humanness mixed together, like, trailing behind him, and just all the banshees just, like, were eating him, and just... So is the is the banshee nest open at this point because they're occupied with i don't know i killed all the banshees at that point already i'd already defeated all of them i didn't uh, on my first go around because you can sneak past them yeah and i did a terrible job and just ended up killing them because yeah i wonder on uh because i I played with a controller you played with mouse and keyboard do you have to hold the shift button to run Mm -hmm. okay because with the controller, you're automatically running, or you just press the stick a little less and, and you start Got walking. It. So I wasn't sure if it's hard to walk with... No, you, no, know, you just walk and then run. You run with shift, yeah. So mm-hmm. it's um, it's extremely tragic and uh, unfortunate, because he's, he's so close to where those radio signals are coming from, the her calling him and stuff. And you see, like, the body of, you know, when you go into the shack, the guy's just, like, stretched into a bunch of different veins and it's crazy man like he's got these snail tendrils coming off of him and i like want to see that the bed. It, when i play it again but i wonder if you first infiltrate the banshee place i did i took out all the banshees oh you said, yeah you just said yeah that. okay yeah i took them all out so it's it's scripted it's supposed to happen well there's more banshees in fact i th- i think pretty nearby there's like what looks to be maybe another nest i looked around man nothing well, it's it's in another area that's sort of outside of the map. So this is also something that this map, uh, th- this portion of the map does, is most of the, a lot of the things you find are on the outside of the map. So you're exploring the edge. And there's no way to know where you are within them, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah because because your difficult. map stops at the edge of the map. So the, the like, waypoint, you know, it shows the radio tower, but it's it's down from... From Quite where you actually, yeah, yeah, it's um, huge. So anyway, it was uh, you know they're, they're randomly placed, but it was pretty near for me. There is a another camp that I'm trying to get to, and there's like this little Sherpa trail on the side of this uh, this cliff, and uh, just I got swarmed by, by banshees. Now this was on my last day, so I didn't go back. Um, I just you know we'll talk about the ending, but I don't know. I man. had the whole day ahead of me, so I'm not sure. I just. When exploring. Maybe you could, but I, I doubt I it. it. I doubt it. It sounds very scripted, very uh, intentional, which, that's unfortunate. Yeah, and you could tell, like, he just kept trying to go, didn't even try to fight him, because, like, his tail's here. He's already out of his shell. His, his The tail is here, oh, and then, like, no. the rest of him is, like, you could tell he dragged on a little further without his back half. Like, it's Oh, my God. Brutal. Well, you know, if, if all of that comes across so clearly, that is just testament to how... Uh, awesome the art is in this yeah, game the environmental it, storytelling is brilliant yeah. they yeah they do an incredible job one of my fa- one of the more tragic moments uh, that i experienced was the um the the family that gives you the air tank yeah so, so they're called the elephants because they all have these huge long nozzled oxygen masks mm-hmm. right yeah it's an interesting little so I'll let you talk about the the mushroom granny in a moment. Uh, she's one of my favorites. But you're to get one of the extra oxygen masks that they have. You you have to go get her son back, who who's run away for some reason. This this woman's son. She's got three kids, uh, and so you you four bring kids. him back. Four kids. <laughs> uh, you you bring him back, and then you're given this tank. 
and the oxygen your, tank. Yeah, the, the oxygen to fill tank to to traverse these other areas. Correct. Now she has she's talked about up to this point how important these masks are. She's trying to keep her family from getting infected from the fungus that she lives very nearby, um, and th- they are not allowed to take their masks off to prevent becoming infected. So you you're inspecting the tank you're given and you sort of open the nozzle and it talks about like it hasn't been used in a long time you sort of break it open a little bit and uh and it makes a point to tell you that your character understands this is an empty tank there hasn't been air released like nothing is coming out of this tank it's empty you're going to find a need to find a way to fill it but the the mom then rushes over and like closes it really quick and says you're going to waste all the clean air that's in there which is implying that she is living a delusion in thinking that she's keeping her family safe, which is very sad. Yeah, but which is, yeah, it's, I mean, even if she did have oxygen, it's a delusion, you know, that you're safe in this horrible, horrible place, you know? Sure, but she thinks that there's clean air in those tanks. Yeah, it's very well done. Very well yeah. done. Uh, yeah, her son has essentially run away to the mushroom granny who lives in the mushroom woods. Uh, very fairy tale. Mm-hmm. the more I say about it, the more I talk. I mean, the whole thing is very fairy tale inspired, but... Just say it like that outright is just great. And then he traipsed into the mushroom woods to find his mushroom grandmother. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's a couple things you can do with her. She's very kind of passive. Um, but the weirdest thing that probably happens in the whole game yes. is you finish your intro conversation with her and you're given your conversation options. One of which is always gossip. You can always gossip with the with the characters. So it's gossip, exit, and eat the mushroom granny what yeah that's like it just as if like yeah, oh, yeah i stopped for like at least to get three minutes just... like no what? no do this task first no be this awful as a person uh-huh. just it's deep, just there the, just as, as if your character option. just goes this is a thing i could do <laughs> and <he> was, <laughs> uh tyler tell me about what it was like eating because you did not eat the mushroom i granny. did not i i got the key from her um, she let me in, and the kid willingly came with me. I carried yeah. him back home to his so mother. He's been locked in a room in the Mushroom Granny's house, and I also got the key from her. She's she's pretty clear. She's like, yeah, if he wants to go, you can you know take him. But um, yeah, he's he's over there, and you unlock the door. You talk to him, and there's a few dialogue options there. I think I must have chosen the wrong things because he's screaming and wailing, and your character mentions this is going to be a very long journey, and it's like next door. You're just it's it's a very short yeah, journey, very short journey. Um, but he is not looking forward to carrying this kid home. Uh, so I must have said the wrong things. Um, but the granny is like, leave him here. He obviously doesn't want to go, and so I wasn't sure what was going to happen. And so I think I captured it this way, but I was like, oh, am I actually going to do this? So I put the kid down and I closed the door and my character's just staring at the door. I'm just staring at the door. I'm like, oh my God, am I really going to do this? I slowly turn around (laughs) and look at the granny and she's just sitting there rocking in her chair. So I (laughs) click on her to engage dialogue. Oh my God, am I really going to do this? And I click on eat granny. And And it is the most delicious dialogue yeah i mean it talks about sinking your teeth into her and like the spores mm. releasing from her forehead and like ripping off of her skin as though her skin is a soft mushroom which we should talk about the grant the mushroom granny a little more just her character uh she's like smoking mushrooms uh and it, the mushrooms have started to grow on her and in her like her hair the the top of her head is it's now earth. growing mushrooms yeah and but there's like earth and like little spin her hair has become spindly grass and like it's yeah. just it's very weird richly detailed it, it is very richly detailed Almost so is the description the of eating uh the mushroom granny i don't remember honestly this is like the least important part about it i don't remember if you get any sort of like buffs from eating those mushrooms but yeah the description is very explicit about how eye-rollingly delicious eating this mushroom granny is (laughs) it's just Uh, disturbing and, and then i open the door again and i take the kid home and he was silent the entire way he just stares at the mushroom granny as you you leave the house uh yeah that's that's that was really but that's this game like this game is so full of those moments and 
especially in the swamp where these characters are really starting to come into their own uh, the ones that have you know that you experienced before and the new characters are all so you're familiar with the world at this mm-hmm. point and you're these things as you stumble in the mushroom granny house it's no longer this what is this why am i here what is going on it's what are, what are you hiding from me what do you need what do i need from you you know it's and you've become more competent as a player yeah um, and and i think it gets that point across very well when you use the uh the journal which we haven't mentioned very much just as you come across yeah. buildings and things you'll see in the corner a little, little notification and uh like the you hear the that. sound effect of a scribble in, in his notebook you'll mark something on his map or make note of something uh, of importance like you know if you need to reference what happened last time you encountered the mushroom granny if you didn't finish all of that in one go you can flip back in the notes to see what happened on that day when you encountered the mushroom granny um and, and the descriptions are great there's very, a lot very of character brief. in them they're yeah they're very brief but they're not uh like mechanical yeah uh, i mean they do serve a very important purpose but there's so much character in all of those absolutely notes. and he talks about like like i think i don't know if it's the mushroom granny or the snail uh, but he mentions how just like absolutely bizarre that is but that's par for the course now yeah he uh, mentions he, yeah that. he mentions yeah. just like i guess i'm used to it cool and that's the feeling that you need to get playing chapter two is this is no matter how weird the swamp gets no matter how how much it pushes the boundaries of what you've expected from this game that you are now in some weird sense in control of the environment of going maybe not like you're not in control of the environment that's the wrong way to say it but you are now in some sense able to function within this space competently Mm -hmm. you as a player you as the character you both understand how this space works and if eat mushroom granny comes up as an option there's that moment of what and then you go well i guess gotta eat the mushroom granny now you know it's just and that leads perfectly into what i want to talk about next which is the ending and why i think it works so well Mm -hmm. now there are multiple endings there are there is a true ending uh which i did not get I was very eager to see what happened at the end of the game and skipped a lot of the stuff that was pretty obviously trying to say there was more going on here, but I didn't skip it. I, uh, I failed the, the other ending. No, no, no. This, this alternate ending happens regardless of which way you get out. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I failed that as well. (laughs) Um, what we're talking about there is there's a, the normal way to get out is you burn down this tree that is just made of the people of this village. Like the people of the village, uh, there's an old cripple who's still alive, who hates the tree, who lives right next to it. He's the only resident left of the village of which this tree has grown up out of, blocking the way out of the forest. And he talks about how people would just get up in the middle of the night and walk towards this tree never to be seen again. And the tree grows bigger and bigger. And it's just this horrifying um, mesh of bodies. What is that uh, Neil Blomkamp short with the giant amalgamation mm. of bodies that is just a monster? I don't remember. Yeah, it's like that, but a tree. And you can barely understand what it's saying. Is it the one saying. that's set in Vietnam? Zygote. No, 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 it's Zygote. Okay. Uh, watch Zygote. It's on YouTube. Just do it. It's amazing. Really, anything from, uh, what is it, Studio Oats or Oats yeah, Studio? Yeah, Oats. Yeah, they, if it's not fantastic it's at least insanely interesting yeah so we're funny like the the cooking shows oh my there's, there's a few episodes of like cooking tech like new cooking tech that's from, like, just the super 80s. graphic and disgusting yeah it's really gross like i i won't describe it but like super bu- bizarre stuff like we're talking about now uh, those are hilarious and yeah just look it up it's on youtube just do something studio favor. oats uh but yeah, I wanted to mention for sure that there are multiple ways out. Uh, one being to burn down that tree, which is what the cripple asks you to do. And the other, you go to that radio tower the Banshees are, are nesting in, and you know the code to the door, which is really bizarre. You, like, you realize the door is locked you, with the code, and you start looking around, and then your character goes, I know the code to that door. And he's right. And you plug in the code and it works. And there's a little basement you can go down and you hit these mushrooms blocking a lever. Uh, They're right across from this bizarre, uh, for lack of a better word, vaginal looking, you know, just horrifying mess of flesh with like a hole in the middle of it. 
uh, that's talking to you saying you only get one chance, you know, it's horrifying. And you, you go and you hit the mushrooms and you go into this dream state and you have one chance to get through this whole little dreamscape sequence, uh, without dying. You don't have any equipment. You just have to pick up stuff along the way. There's a very scripted set of sequences that need to happen. Uh, I died. I could make it. Yeah, it's uh-huh. it's very difficult. I also can't get this out of my head. I I think there's a word for that. I think I heard it was once, uh, like the the female equivalent of phallic. Uh, I think it's yonic, which okay. is very odd. I've I've never heard that actually used before, but I just I'll heard that somewhere. Yeah, I have no idea. I'm not trying to correct you. I just can't stop thinking of that word. Beautiful. Uh, no, that's, uh, that's anyway. Perfect. Um, yeah, it's very difficult. Yeah, really hard. I didn't get through it. But uh, regardless of which way you go, uh, you come out onto the the way out. It's the road, the road you've been looking for. And you see countless other people on the road who have been cr- – like who are cross. One guy – you see the cripple still trying to crawl his way out. And you see just a – hundreds it feels like it's not actually hundreds but it feels like hundreds of these other bodies that have kind of started to grow into a root structure just trying to escape and the thing that sets you off right away is going why am i still walking out why am i still why am i not why is this not happening to me why am i still getting out and you come out and you see i mean power lines you see power lines like right out of this like just immediately outside you see power lines and you walk you walk down these power lines. It's extremely surreal. You come across an old lady feeding pigeons, and the pigeons fly away. And you find your apartment, and you go up to your apartment. And, and, and the whole time, you know, like you you're just walking, and you scare the pigeons away. And she's like, "Great, now they're gone." And then you're like walking. Uh, you see someone uh, like having a smoke outside of the apartment and they you say, recognize. Hey neighbor or something like yeah, that. Yeah, You or... recognize them. And then your you, character you says, everybody. hello. Yeah. It's really weird. And you go up to your apartment, you see the janitor, um, and you go into your room, you take off your jacket. Uh, it gives you not, you click on the closet. You can take off your jacket. You, you go get your key for your bedroom, maybe get ready for bed a little bit, open your bedroom and you crawl in bed and go to sleep. And that's it. That's it. And the best part, this is before I looked anything up about the other ending, before I looked up anything else about the game, is I immediately felt I don't belong here. And what's worse is I don't, I think I want to go back Yeah. to the woods. And for me as a human player to feel that, not for the character to tell me that's how he's feeling, which he doesn't. He looks like he's very content, actually, to lie in bed. And and more to that point, uh, there's also an option to just like sit down and have some soup. He has mm-hmm. someone living there who, you know, you've been gone for a month, but it, someone has been like anticipating your return and left some soup on the stove for you yeah. that day that you just reheat and have some soup. It's very much, you know, without even thinking about it, like this is not right. This is not right. It's not. It, it, this is not who I can be anymore. I want to go back to the woods. And I, the implication, of course, is that you are still in the woods. Who would know you're coming back and has that soup ready for you? You're probably massively deformed, haggard, disgusting, and nobody comments on it. It is this surreal, perfect cherry on top of this game. And I looked up the other ending, the true ending. Um, I, so I've talked about spoilers a lot. I don't care very much about them. Maybe can we refrain from that one? I will, on purpose. Uh, I looked it up, and I like this one better. Really? Um, The other one is far more cathartic, much more fits in line with what you want from a game, specifically this game. This ending is a horror ending. Yeah. This ending is the I don't care. It's, It's like the Inception thing where I believe, at the end of Inception, that he decided... Um, I'd rather live in a dream. He decides, I know it's not real. I, this is just what I want. I want to feel this way. I don't care how it affects other people. I'm just, I'm done. I'm done. Done wrestling with this stuff. I just want to be in a dream. Interesting. More to that point, everything you do when you get home, just like turning on the stove, 
it is all exactly the same yes. as as you do it. You have with, an inventory, you have linen. When you first see that linen, you're like, oh, an inventory upgrade. You're like, oh, no, this is just a normal thing that people have in their, in their yeah. drawers. Oh, what? what well, when you I, turn I on the stove, the you have to relight the stove, and, and it's the same sort The same sort of animation sequence. to turn that safety stove on when you're in the, in the woods yeah. to keep the monsters at bay. And, you know... That's, man, I wish I was a more intelligent person. I didn't interpret it that way. I just, I thought he got out, which may be the case, but that's a very interesting interpretation. And the best part is regardless of how the character feels about it, right? What's so important is that you as the player go, I want to go back to the woods. Yeah, I, I wasn't happy with the happy ending. I Yeah, you, I feel for the character in the sense that this is not where I belong anymore. Uh, because, exp- I've said it multiple times already, but I want to hammer it home. That your co- you do, the empowering moment in the swamp where you restart and are doing great because you know how to survive now. Where things have become normal. Where I am now in some sense, in control of what is going on here, that I'm a part of this ecosystem in some sense, that I am... You definitely are. Capable. A a force in the ecosystem. And that I'm capable enough to handle what's going on. And, you know, you have a system, you have a routine, you have things that you as a player have built and structured explicitly for that purpose. Having all your stuff leave and have to rebuild it just reinforces that that routine that you've built for yourself. So when you leave and you see little shadows and images of that routine in your apartment room, it just enforces it all the more of I'm still lost in that woods. Even if the character isn't, I am still lost in that woods. And that moment before everything, you know, the fallout standard ending that shows you how all your decisions impacted the characters, that moment is where I leaned back in my chair and go, I love this game. Yeah. That's and where it's, I decided it's incredible. this is a game that I adore beyond words and would recommend. I've recommended it to so many people already. It's an extremely unique, special, and so finely tuned mm-hmm. of an experience. And more to that point about just how much I love this game. I almost, I, I've at least done it once this this episode. I probably did it last episode and certainly in the past two weeks talking about this game. I have explicitly said when I play it again. I almost never do that. You know, I mentioned playing I Transistor like that. four or five times this year. That is huge that exception. Is a huge exception. Rarely do I finish a game, uh, except for when we started this podcast. I, I've really started diving into games a yeah, lot. It's been cool. Um, but usually it's one and done. I, I very rarely play a game again. And I. I don't remember wanting to dive into a game Especially so a much survival again. game. Yeah, which is not a game I typically play. Not something I go for usually. This is an absolutely cre- incredible experience. Uh, I, I don't know of anything that delivers something even remotely similar. Yeah. Uh, this is, is a one-of-a-kind gem. I'm really, really looking forward to whatever Acid Wizard does next. I think that they are... Do they do anything before? I don't think so. Wow. I think this is just <laughs> wow. their, yeah. I think it's just them, a bunch of college buddies, uh, from what I understand. So, yeah, guys, do it. Please, Knock it out of the park. Please play this game. Yeah. It is. Oh my gosh. Incredible. Yeah. Really glad that you could share it with us too. If you've played it before, if not, please play it. Talk to us about it. I need to talk to more people about this yeah. game. Now, you know, huge recommendations from both of us. Um, you will likely run into to some walls. I did. There were yep. a couple points where I had to walk away from the game. Um, Sometimes there's an obscure puzzle that you might have to look up because it just it doesn't click. Um, yeah. Things, you know, it, it might not be um, communicating its puzzle elements very clearly sometimes. Yeah. Um, some of the things on the on the surface are a little little rough. But it's like, you know, one of those really awesome uh, stones you'll see that's just been cut in half. Uh, the outside of that, it's just a boring rock. But inside, it just gets more and more beautiful as you look into it. Uh, I like that. And that's that's what this game is going to offer. And I, I can't recommend it enough. I know some of those edges are rough. There will be some times where you get very frustrated. But if you can press through, I, I think this will be a one-of-a-kind uh, gameplay experience for you. Yep, so play Darkwood. Yes. Play Darkwood. Man, 
happy we got to share that. Uh, I I don't have anything else on it though. No, nope, uh, I I'm might good. next time I play it, maybe I'll try hard with those. What is it? Four lives. I four think or five get. lives or and something. Then, and then there's one more difficulty where it's just straight up permadeath. That's, That's insane nuts. to me. That is nuts. Insane. But now you know it. You mentioned last time, like you you've done the first area, but now we've done the second chapter, so we could probably go through the first chapter very. I quickly. have a very strong feeling that uh, anybody who's played the game once already, and has that competency, that you can you can really rush through it, like really know what you're going to build, know your routines already, know how you want to tackle this, know how you want to tackle that. Yeah, and like, you know... You've it, become it, a part of the woods already, yeah. you know? Yeah, uh, like, it was just about uh, to the third area where I realized just how awesome the basic branches you get from the uh, from the savages are. They, they have what is likely the uh, longest reach in the game, they they're weak you can hit like four or five things with them they break pretty easily but in the second area you've got those larger dogs that run at you well when you hit them you completely stun them like they they roll over and it's it's a huge reach and then by the time they're finished with that animation you can have another attack ready so i picked up all of those and and would have like three or four slots in my inventory ready with branches because so crazy. they're really good. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, now that I already know that, that's the first thing I'm going to get. You know, sure, I can upgrade it to a shovel, a, to or, a shovel or something. But, yeah, I mean, I'll probably still do that. <laughs> I'm trying to, like, justify the branch after you already have the <laughs> shovel. But for, for beginning weapons, that's good. Yeah. That's really good. And so when you, when you already have that knowledge, uh, you know, you... It told me that the Molotovs were incredible. Yes, they are. Yeah, it really, yes, especially those first are. two areas, man. Just like if you get in a bind, just burn, baby. But burn. I have this thing where, like, I don't know how valuable a consumable is or isn't, sure. especially in a game like this. So. I'm very good at just going, you know what, let's try it. I'm sure if the game's balanced, it'll figure out a way to fix me, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, so, I, like, I didn't use the gun until halfway through the swamp. I had a gun for a while. Yeah, you told me like, oh man, these crocodile monsters, they're super hard. They're going to, I'm like, I'm like, I'm sneaking around them at every opportunity. If I see them, I will not even go towards that area. And then one of them attacked me and I just grabbed my shotgun and kill it in one hit. And I'm like, oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> or the, the axe, you know, the, the axe, oh, the does axe does almost lethal damage. damage. Yeah. Uh, but I'm using lesser weapons because I don't want those things to break because I've got other consumables that are used to repair those or make new items. Yeah. Uh, and like, it's I'm scared to yeah. use the things, but now I know. Now it's I know extremely better. well balanced. Um, and you can't stockpile anything either. I wanted to mention this. You can't like mm-hmm. just stockpile reputation, which uh, in case you're listening, uh, it, later after the first episode, reputation is, you know, you not necessarily money. If you survive a night, a certain vendor might give you reputation points, right? Uh, if you, trade a lot with one vendor they might give you more reputation points like you know more than what you've gotten from trading with them they're just going to give you some extra little you know bonus credit for thanks for coming to shop with us kind of thing and it's just interesting because you if you stockpile that stuff every vendor only has certain amount of things every day yeah and so you know i remember being at the end of the old woods and you know you have to have scrap metal to repair your shovel and I would have to, I was starting to run out because it took like, I don't remember how much, it took like four to repair both my shovel or five or something to repair both my shovel and my axe. It takes two to repair each, so four. Yeah, so, but you only buy three from the main vendor every day. Yeah. And so I'm starting to like have to pick what I want to repair. And See, that wasn't the case for me until halfway through the swamp because I wasn't using those things. I had a ton of scrap metal. Oh, I used them to make bear traps incessantly. Yeah, you know, I I found that the bear traps weren't really doing it for me. I They hold them in place. Yeah. So, like, if three guys come in and you catch two, you're facing one guy at a time. Yeah, uh, but I didn't put them in my room. I put them like outside of the uh, the oh, windows and stuff. No, it's not helpful. Uh, it, yeah, it it wasn't working out for me very yeah. well. If you because if you if they break in and they get stuck, then you can go take them out. But anyway, well, um, then you have to dismantle it because if if no one does break in, no, you just walk around it. You just sure, put it but a so could they? they. Uh, you, well, sure, but rarely. Like you, I make it to where I can just barely sneak past. You, you should try playing with bear traps. I I, might. I always have them. 
I will definitely have them. play with the Molotovs a little more. And did you know you can uh, you can eat the the odd meat that you get? Um, no. Yeah, it gives you uh, a healing boost, like a pretty significant healing boost, and an armor boost. What? I didn't know that until my last day. That's insane. Yeah, well, well what I'm assuming is an armor boost. Uh, like the the icon for, for whatever that sure. ability is, is like scales. Yeah. So I'm assuming it's it's an armor boost. Uh, but yeah, it, you can you can eat that stuff. That's awesome. And then it, one of the abilities, uh, which I never used, allows you to uh, um, eat mushrooms to survive. Yeah. Um, what I did get, and I did not know how good it was until, again, like halfway through the... Uh, the swamp, the the one that lets you eat wood to heal. Oh, I didn't do that one. Yeah, because wood is pretty common, and you can buy I think like fifteen or sixteen 15 from the day. vendor every day. Uh, but it heals, uh, I think half eating one piece of wood slowly heals half of one of the bars. That's crazy. Uh, so you can eat without uh, before the the health upgrade. Four pieces of wood will heal you fully. Yeah, I got um, that health upgrade right away. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay, here we go. Um, so I, I selected the the like survivalist thing that lets you eat the wood and, and heal pretty early on, but didn't use it. Scream was my favorite. You know, I ne- I had it, literally never used it. Never? Not a single time. Because I forget. All the time. I'm, there's so many things I'm, I'm If managing. I'm surrounded and dying, just scream. I forgot about it every single time. Just like the dodge button, I forgot every single time it would have been relevant. I forgot I was, was there. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, just I don't have anything else to say about it either, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, just to sum up, play Darkwood, hashtag play, play Darkwood. Darkwood. Uh, but really glad you guys could join us today. Uh, really, really like this game. I uh, hope you get a chance to check it out, uh, share it with us. If you've already played it, definitely let us know. We will probably be making it one of our monthly playthroughs on the Discord um, if one of us starts playing it again. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, we would love to have you join us. But take it easy. All right. Thank you. <laughs>